25 years ago was really a dream come true for me. And welcome to the Blessed Theatre. Obviously, this is another fantastic opportunity of just one of those enhancements that we've got planned for you, this transatlantic special cruise crossing. Now, I know this doesn't need an introduction, but ladies and gentlemen, please welcome not only the original voice of Belle from the animated movie, the Disney leg legend who is as genuine as she is beautiful, Miss Paige O'Hara. It's typical. All actors are insecure. Right? I don't care what you say. We're all insecure. <laughs> like ten or twelve people there. Everybody okay? Don't worry about it. Um, so this is a very uh, uh, a casual format. We've done a couple of other cruises, Panama ca uh, Canal cruise, and um, so this is a, a when they first approached you know Paige to say, hey, we'd love for you to come on the ship and. Do a presentation like maybe PowerPoint. Her eyes glazed over in her head, and she went, "No, I don't do PowerPoint." <laughs> uh, but we went to see a. My friend runs a, a film festival, and, and Shirley MacLaine was there, and, and uh, literally she came out on stage with a guy who had written a book with her, and they sat across each other and just talked. And we went, "We could, we could do that." So that's kind of the format of this. You know, you just saw. 30 years of Paige's life in 12 minutes. <laughs> so what we're going to do is we're going to start and go through stuff and sort of expand on some of those ideas. And this, by the way, this little ditty, which was uh, quite quite interesting, um, yeah. this was put together for the 25th anniversary of Beauty and the Beast. And how yes. does this all sort of come Oh, it was crazy. David, David, Jessen. Yeah, David Jessen, who's uh, adored at Disney, he's moved up the ladder, he's now... A VP and, and uh, marketing and um, he, he just called me and said well, we really want to do this but can we move into your house for the week <laughs> yeah, so, uh, this is typical Disney yeah. because they call you up and say hey here's this little thing we want to do are you interested and of course we always say yeah. yes and then they go when is it and they go tomorrow <laughs> It's well, honestly, it's like tomorrow, and, and they say, "Well, we just want to shoot this little video, and you know, we thought, okay, very funny. you know, they'll come, they'll put up a camera, and it'll be an hour." <laughs> it was a week. It was. A, they moved into our house. It was great. Actually, it was a lot of fun. They shot so much footage. I'm like, we could have put a four-hour movie together here, and then we wouldn't have to talk. But uh, the only bad part was my poor kitty went into like shock and hit hit for a week. <laughs> but uh, anyway. It was, it was really fun, and it was kind of funny. They said, oh, we have your stylist for you, Paige. And I was like, I really don't need a stylist. It's really Well, she does Giselle. <laughs> but wouldn't you like to meet her? And I said, yes. yes. <laughs> <laughs> so it was kind of fun, you yeah. know. Paige asked them about halfway through the film, and she said, is this, is this for when I die? <laughs> I thought it was an obituary. <laughs> <laughs> But it was so weird because they covered everything. I mean, you guys don't know I'm a diehard sports fan and, and NBA fanatic, and they we have a basketball court, and they actually came out and played basketball with me and put that on there, and it was crazy. But it was fun. It was fun. So let's 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 roll back in time to uh, a Paige O'Hara, born um, not Paige O'Hara. Donna Paige Helmentoller. <laughs> was my name. And <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, the voice of Belle, Donna Helmentoller. <laughs> <laughs> and I was never called Donna, ever. I was always called Paige. You hated Donna, right? I it just didn't, wasn't me. I don't hate Donna. Donna. There are other Donnas I love, like Donna Murphy, yeah. but it's, it just wasn't me. But anyway. So when you got in trouble, did your mom call you like, Donna Paige? No, she didn't like the name either. My father <laughs> talked her into it. <laughs> <laughs> you name your daughter, you don't mind. 
Oh, it was weird. I was her fifth child, no, fourth child at that point. And she so, was like, whatever. And she wanted to be done. Okay. And yeah. you hated it. So how, what, how did it come to be Pedro? I don't know. Well, sort of when I graduated high school at 17. And everybody called you Paige then. Always in high school, yeah. Okay. Yeah. And Paige uh, Helmet Helmut Toller. Yes. Okay. Right. Yeah, my sisters were the, the Helmut Toller girls at Nova High School. We wreaked havoc on Nova. <laughs> you did. Yeah. Yeah. But uh, it was a producer, Michael... Call, uh, from Michael, Caldwell, Michael Hall. Hall. Michael Hall, Michael yeah. Hall we, I was hired to play Maria in Sound of Music, which from that production I went on to do a million of them. And uh, he said, we can't call you Home and Taller. Uh, <laughs> do you have a favorite character? I said, like, We don't have any letters on it. <laughs> he said, oh, I love Scarlett O'Hara. He said, perfect. Ah, perfect. Ah, so from 17 on. From, from Scarlett, of course. Really? Yes, I did. So, uh, growing up, you're Fort Lauderdale girl, right? Uh, yes, I, 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 I was telling the truth at three years old. I mean, I, my mom would wake up in the middle of the night and I was in front of the TV watching Johnny Carson, whatever, but I just wanted to be... <laughs> Wait a minute. Three-year-olds don't watch Johnny Carson. <laughs> oh, I did. I did. <laughs> I also, at three years old, had a, a thing for Beethoven. I was just weird. You're weird. You're odd. You're definitely the odd You're man, 12 years old. I actually played Peter at the Hollywood Bowl at 42, which is I got a crow. I'm just the cleverest feller twas ever my fortune to know. I taught a trick for my shadow to stick to the tip of my toe. I got a crow. Uh, 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 uh. <laughs> Slightly lower key than what I did. <laughs> and you obviously won that competition? Or? I came an honorable mention. Oh, well, nice. Another hundred people just got off of the bus and they're looking around. And another hundred people who got off of the plane and they're looking at us who got off of the train and the plane and the bus maybe yesterday. A city of strangers, some from the work, some to play. Okay, <laughs> okay so uh, you made a couple of little things. So, what was your first like? At this time, you were doing like community theater and, and all that other kind of stuff too. Uh, yeah, out, I, out of New York. Well, my, my mom would trade me as. Uh, as we saw a lot of photos. As of Juliet, Merlin yeah, and yeah. Juliet. So I actually got to play Juliet. I was in class with Joanna Merlin, and Meryl Streep was in my class briefly. But but I remember Meryl I was working on. Who? I know. <laughs> it was unusual that I was 17 because most of the actors in there. She were, couldn't sing though, could she? Yeah, she can. Meryl Streep can do. That woman is great. She would. She was like in her late 20s when I met her. And, she would play she an, even Oh then? my gosh, she used to play like an 80 year old in class and you, all of a sudden you're seeing an 80 year old woman and I'm, she's brilliant, yeah. really brilliant. So when she told me I was ready to play Juliet, she said you nailed it today. Like, she told you that? Yes. Yeah. So, but that was fun and, uh, but you know, my first... Well, you were first, mostly a singer, right? I mean, that's how New York really knew you as a, as a singer. I mean, well, but you, you and I feel the same way. Singing yeah, and acting yeah, yeah, are all the yeah. same thing. I feel like a, an actor who sings is way better than a singer who can, you know, sing. You see, he always says that. And he's like got one of the greatest baritone voices in New York. I mean, I mean he's, reti he's retired now. Give him just one line. Oh, <laughs> Oh my gosh. Well, I'll tell you the story real quickly of how I met Michael. <laughs> I'm not singing much these days. You can probably tell. <clears throat> anybody, want, anybody know Maria? Want to sing it with me? <laughs> High on a hill was a lonely goat herd. Lay, 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 Loud was the voice of the lonely goat herd. Lay, 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 Folks in a town that was quite remote, her lady of lady of lady who I can't do this anymore. <laughs> I 
excuse. I sound like Julie Andrews. What did you steal from her? Come on. I love Julie Andrews. That's my other story. Yeah. I just had my 63rd birthday a few days ago. Wow. So I have to work extra hard to get this back in shape. I and mean, I haven't really been singing much lately, but I'm kind of getting the bug to get back in shape and do it again. So. Ellie Mae Chip. Yeah. Life upon the wicked stage ain't ever what a girl supposes. Do you know that song, anybody? <laughs> I got virtue, but it ain't been tested. No one's even interested. Life upon the wicked stage ain't nothing for a girl. <laughs> That's normally a dance role as well, and uh, the great Pat Birch was choreographing, and before I got the job, she said, we're going to work out in front of a mirror, and blah, 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 blah. And I was never really a good dancer, but I was a good athlete. So she incorporated, you know, splits and kicks and, you know, all that stuff, and made me look good, just like Robbie Marshall. Robbie, always, when I worked with him, made me look like a dancer. <laughs> so cool. Yeah. So your first Broadway show. Yeah. What was that like? Do you remember? Do you remember? It was amazing. Remember, remember opening night? It must have been a big deal. I mean, that was a, it was a huge that was deal. A big, that was a big show. That was. My sisters and my, my parents flew in. people in the company, and that was a big deal. It was an amazing, amazing night. Yeah. The only thing there again, and this will be the end of the Lou saga, but my mom saw me after the show in this maternal. I was 24 years old. Yeah, he was trying it was to. Very, be, yeah old lady dress to be honest with you and she said what are you doing i said lou wouldn't let me wear anything with this and she said he, he's got to go Paige. he's got to go. <laughs> that night i kind of knew because not only did my mom say that bill hammerstein had to throw him out of the party so <laughs> anyway after that everything went great so we just got the divorce john aniston i don't know if you know john jennifer's dad was one of my best friends and john aniston and his wife Sherry gave me the keys to his apartment. Yeah, if you know, John was a, a huge soap opera star. Yeah. Where he, he did uh, was it uh, it was uh, it? One Life to the Days of Days Our Lives. Yeah, Victor Kariakis. Like forever. Forever. <laughs> for like 30 years. So. I mean, I knew him long enough that I remember Jennifer as a little kid. And uh, <laughs> that was another story. Talk about someone who worked her tail off. Yeah. She was always made fun of. She was overweight. She was kind of gawky. And, Played all the comedy roles in high school, but when she decided she wanted to be a star, John said, "We're gonna have to do this, 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 and this. You know, take care of nose and all." That. Anyway, that, that, that's another show. To talk about. <laughs> Jennifer's the sweetest girl in the world. So how how, uh, but, how does somebody who you know, I mean, Paige is predominantly known in New York as a belter. That's what she's known as a high belt. Um, uh, and yet here you are doing, you know, legit, legit, uh, well, you know, semi-operatic kind of stuff. How do you make that? I train. I, I train to do that. This how you help me in New York. You did that. Yes, I was. I, it opens up so many other parts. You know, I could play. That I could play. Like one of my biggest ones of recordings was up the I sing, let him eat cake. We're Gershwin, those, yeah. but yeah. that was pure to support. Now. Uh, so we're talking probably uh, 19, mid-80s, late 80s, right? Mm -hmm. So you've been in New York for about 10 years, something like that, mm -hmm. 12 years. And yeah. You've made a name for yourself now. You're pretty well known in New York. And then this blurb hits the New York Times or something, right? Mm -hmm. And what was that little blurb? And oh, just the about the Beauty of the Beast is their next film after Little Mermaid. Right. And, uh... You know, Howard and, and Alan, for those of you who guys maybe don't know, um, they were New York people. That's where they were. Um, they had worked, little shop of horrors. They had worked big together. Hit, they had worked yeah. separately. They had, you know, New York was home for them, and so they were, they were very well known for that. And of course, uh, uh, Howard had worked on a show uh, called uh, Smile. Smile with Jody Benson. Uh, and Jody Benson was in <clears throat> Smile, and so and Jody sang this great song called Disneyland. That was one of the best songs of that show. And um, Howard adored Joe. Jo jo so yeah. she was precast as Ariel. She did not yeah, play so, audition. You know, and, and in retrospect, you, you guys are, are, are Disney people, so you probably have a better idea of this. But if, there's a there's a film called Don Hahn, who is you know a god at Disney, as far as we're concerned. Um, uh, he's done a lot of documentaries, and one of them was called uh, Waking Sleeping Beauty. Uh, and oh, and it, it, it deals with you have to you have to see it. It deals with uh, uh, what 
the trials and tribulations that were going on in the animation studios uh, right at the time that all of this was happening because uh, unbeknownst to the rest of the world, animation at Disney was really dead. It, it was, was dead. A dead they had moved the animators off of the they studio. They weren't even in the studio anymore. Put them in a trailer someplace because that's how low animation had fallen. And it is true that I Howard did. and Alan literally begged Disney to do Little Mermaid. I mean, to the point that they put their own money into the movie. And um, so Little Mermaid was made with ten million dollars. That was their budget. Yeah. Uh, and half of it was out was Howard's money. Yeah. So. And. and uh, so it was a pretty low profile gig, you know, I mean, and Jody, as you say, so who did, who did Alan and, you know, Howard hire? They hired their people that they know in New York. They hired musical theater people. That's who they hired. Pat Carroll. You know, yeah. that's, that's who they hired because that's who they knew. And it was kind of a low budget kind of, hey, we're going to do this and hope it works kind of thing. Uh, and then obviously when uh, Little Mermaid was such a, a huge success, uh, the next project was uh, Beauty and the Beast, and so the New York Times ran Actually, little... it was going to be Aladdin, but then they put Aladdin on It was Aladdin, 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 and then they had storyboard problems, problems. with Aladdin. So then they did so, Beauty and the Beast. You know, uh, 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 Beauty and the Beast had been on Walt's desk forever. He wanted to make, uh, he wanted to make an animated uh, classic um, but as you know, the Jean Cocteau they, original story, all they do is go yeah. to dinner. I mean, you can't do two it's hours of just going to dinner. They never work, you know? <laughs> Every time they bring it up, you know, what? The, the beast brings her down, they have dinner, they have a conversation. She <laughs> says, no, we go back to the room. It's like, you know, so they couldn't make it work. But Linda Wolverton, Linda I, came in and she's, she's very much Belle. I share the role of Belle with Linda Wolverton because she and I are so much alike and we're so much like Belle. I mean, it's like creepy that I had to like play myself for the first time in a movie and um, but also Mark Henn and you know the animators we all kind of share the role but Linda Linda's as almost if not more important than anyone else that was involved really. yeah. and that was the time too with Jeffrey Katzenberg and, and Michael Eisner were working together and I was really close to both of them and then they started at Friction during Pocahontas and, and uh, Jeffrey left but it was interesting. But that combination, we had two alpha males, and constantly, yeah. you have to, the door down the hall would be closed, yeah. and you hear, ah, screaming and yelling and carrying on, and then they come out and they'd be hugging and shaking hands. <laughs> Just they were so headstrong on what they wanted. Yeah, the word was Jeffrey Katzenberg, <clears throat> when he was brought into the studio, uh, thought he was going to be making, you know, live action films. And they said, okay, Jeffrey, you're going to be running the animation. And he said, I don't want to do it. And they said, you're going to be running the animation. <laughs> he said, I don't want to do it. <laughs> and he said, you are running the animation. So well, he was kind of forced into it. Actually. And he was, uh, as look at the results, he was brilliant. Because, I mean, what because he, he was like everybody else. Why? It doesn't make any money. It's a dead issue. And, you know, what, 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 why would I want to do that? And then with Little Mermaid, and, and, I, and, yeah. and, you know, it was actually a perfect fit for Jeffrey. It was. Because he, if you've ever met Jeffrey, He's a micromanager. He, he, he detail. detail. Every detail, detail, he's on top of it. And so animation was a perfect fit for him because animation, and Paige and I have talked about it a lot, animation is, I'm, I'm talking too much. I just, I just want to tell him a really sweet thing that Jeffrey did for me. When the Oscars nominated all the songs and stuff from Beauty and the Beast, the Oscars told Jeffrey that they were going to hire pop singers to do our songs. And he said, if you don't hire Paige, Richard, Jerry, all of my people, you can't have the songs. So we got to sing on, on the Oscar for Jeffrey Cassidy put his foot down. So, yeah, it was like Melissa Manchester singing Belle, but that was what it was going to be. She was the one they wanted at that time. It's like, I mean, I love Melissa, but she's not Belle. So it was really cool. It was really amazing. Here's yeah. Detail oriented Jeffrey Katzenberg is. We were in New York for the 25th anniversary. We hadn't talked to Jeffrey Katzenberg. A couple left of years. the studio, yeah. you know, blah, 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 blah. We were sitting there with Don Juan, and Paige said, you know, Robbie and all that, and Richard, everybody was there. And, and, and Paige said, oh, just wait, I wish Jeffrey was here. And Don Juan looked at us and said, send him an email. And we're like, what are you talking about? Send Jeffrey Katzenberg an email. First of all, I don't have his email address. And second of all, he gets a, a million emails a day. He said, send him an email. He'll get back to you. 
And we did. We, Ten minutes later, I sent an email from I my from you know. my phone, which he didn't have in his you know in his database, and within ten minutes. Yeah. Oh, thank you, thank you, Paige, yeah. and uh, I wish I was there. That's who he is. He's he's a really interesting guy. Well, yeah, yeah and Disney has always been incredibly loyal. To, you know, to me too. And when I, my mother and father passed away, and when my sister passed away in 2009, they were totally nurturing and, and comforting. And actually, Michael and I were on this ship for the 2000 millennial. This ship. This yeah. ship. And Jody Benson was yeah. on the Wonder, and we all went out and did fireworks and stuff. Well, but that was right after my mom had died, and I was yeah. not singing, I was only painting. I was like in major depression. And Mr. Eisner said, I really, really want you to come and sing. I was like, Michael, I don't know if I could like start crying if I sing. I was so close to my mom. Anyway, he talked me into it and really it ended up being an amazing night and it got me back on my feet and singing again. Yeah, I think he knew. These people know what, what you need. Sometimes you don't know what you need. I did need to get back on stage and stop being sad. Yeah. So you, you read about Beauty and the Beast? Oh, yeah. yeah, went in. You audition. didn't know Howard or Alan or any of those no. people. You hadn't met them or worked with any of them, right? No. I so went in how, how did that whole you, how did that all come to be? How did that start to Well, to I, be? I went in and auditioned with a tape recorder. <laughs> it's just like a tape recorder, you know. Who was, like, in, who was in the room with you? Just the first one was just the casting director, Albert. Just the casting director. Albert and then, Albert. then as they went and progressed, they would we had the entire group there by the fifth audition and then they'd close their eyes sometimes when I was reading or singing and then open them up and right. that was it. So, when it was just Albert, you know, it was pretty preliminary. I mean, you walk in and there's still... Except he told me. Albert yeah. said, you're getting a call back. I'm telling you that right now. Okay. So, okay. And I wore my lucky blue you, dress. I wore the same dress every time. What did you, did you <laughs> sing or read? I sang Heaven Help My Heart from Chess. And okay. then uh, from the second audition through the fifth, I sang from, the, from Beauty and the Beast. They gave you a they gave script, me music. They gave yeah. you music, and they worked mm -hmm. with you there. And, and was anybody coaching you? Or no, just, not, just not yet. Do it, huh? Yeah. So, at what point in time... Uh, did you feel like, okay, maybe I'm actually going to get this part? This is weird, because I'm always really insecure about had auditioning. You read the whole I think, well, they saw it on the video. Had before. you read the whole script? No, just, just what they had said. Yeah. So, just but I knew from the beginning I was going to get the job. And Michael and I were really about to get married. He literally proposed to me three days before I got Beauty and the Beast. It was like quite a week. Yeah. <laughs> and, uh, but I, I felt it was my part. I just felt it was my turn, which is... If it hadn't been, I probably would have had a big fall. But I had that positivity that, you know, I just, that's what I thought. And, and did they ever interact with you? Did they ever, like, oh, yes. direct you? Oh, yes. Or, Kirk Wise or, and Gary Kirk Wise, they, they came they to the latter directly. auditions? Absolutely. And, and so did they team you up with people at all in that process? Yes. Or did they just have you solo stuff? We got teamed up with different beasts. Yeah. And the other thing, too, is they didn't hire Robbie till a month into my recordings. And, uh... When we finally had our beast and Robbie Benson came into the studio that day, it was just like the whole thing came together. My character came together. And he was such a brilliant man. He's a, and he's a Broadway guy, too. He met his wife doing Benson, Pirates of Penzance on Broadway. But Robbie was kind of the, the, what made it all come to him. Look at those fruition. photos, and you guys were such an issue with your pageant uh, hair. Pageant hair. What was I thinking? <laughs> oh, God, that hair <laughs> They call you up and say, hey, we got press today. Yes, because nobody, I never... Nobody shows up in the studio no, looking like I that. I never had my hair yeah. like that when Usually we Usually it's blue jeans and a ball cap. And, and, and the long hair and the face. Hair. Let's work. No, that's what I should have kept with the jeans. Like my mom said, you better curl your hair. <laughs> <laughs> and so, uh, you... you, you, you know, how did you find out you actually got this? this that was funny because changer. I was waiting to hear from my agent and <laughs> and the musical director. Remember, we didn't have cell phones. Back yeah. then. We didn't have text <laughs> messages. Yeah. Voice we had a beeper. If you Beepers really cool, and voice messages. Beeper. Remember what a beeper is? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Right. Oh, I got a phone call. Well, I came in, my answering machine had a voice on it, and it's, hi, Paige, it's David Friedman, who's the conductor of Beauty and the Beast. He said, we got to get together and set your keys for Belle. And he I'm did like, not do that before. Yes. <laughs> I was like Oops. screaming in my apartment. I'm like, That's how I found and out David I David went, uh, you haven't got a call yet, have you? <laughs> uh, forget I called, and I'll call you tomorrow. It was amazing. So you guys this, have any questions? This, yeah. uh, this, uh, yeah. Um, so, when you're in a recording studio, usually you don't have a lot of 
Well, you know, Robbie and I that were a first. I asked them to let us record together. And um, they normally don't do that because it's a lot more time consuming, it's trickier edit editing wise, mm -hmm. but it worked and they saw it work. <laughs> Consequently, in Aladdin, uh, Linda got to record with, with her leading man as well. But they also love Richard White and myself because we we're old friends. I mean, I could, I was ad libbing and making up lines, putting down Gaston. That were the year two thousand, not back then. <laughs> they said, "Page, no, no, we can't do that." But it made it more realistic. You know, it was really fun. It was very realistic, and um, it was it's not the norm now. Yeah. Now the the other character actors are all in boots by themselves. Yeah. However. Mm -hmm. The day that we recorded the score in the big studio with the live orchestra, Angela Lansbury was out on the road and she got stuck in another city and couldn't get there, uh, to get home. So she, she had a bomb threat. Had a bomb, had a bomb threat. threat. Well, you had to, was supposed to land. And, so, and long story short, she got there. It was like seven o'clock at night, and she'd been traveling for a day and a half. She traveled. The, she just you kept know. traveling and had no sleep for twenty-four hours. And they said, "Well, wait and record Beauty and the Beast later." And she said. You know, I idolize Angela. I saw her six times in Gypsy on Broadway. But she came in and said, no, I'll give it a try and whatever. Long story short, blah, 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 blah. She starts singing Beauty and the Beast. One take, not a dry eye in the theater. <laughs> and that one take is in the movie. <laughs> Everybody talks about Paige being a voiceover person, you know, uh, and, and she did do a voice, but we don't think of her that way. She doesn't think of her that way. Um, we think of her as an actress, okay, and um, um, I think, and Paige would probably agree with this, part of the reason she's so successful with her singing, recording-wise, as well as with Belle, is because the the microphone loves her voice. Microphones either like your voice or they don't. You can't teach it. It's yeah. it's a gift, and she has a gift. The microphone just well, as long as it's a Norman. You pick up emotion. Norman mics. They pick up color, you know. <laughs> and so, for her, when people say, "How do you get into voiceover?" She's always like, "I don't know how you do that. And that's not that's not what I do." You know. Yeah. Um, but, but we it, have friends you know, that make a great living at it, and there is a skill to voiceover yeah. as well. It, it, usually. <laughs> Uh, you're absolutely right. They put you in a room by yourself and yeah. you do a script and say, hey, give me five different readings of that. And then they'll listen and they'll go, okay, now think this or do this. And you'll give them five more readings and they'll make notes and they'll go, and then you'll go to the next line. And Paige is like, And actually, I, I did do it by myself when we started doing all the yeah. games and toys and everything. I was literally on the phone with the director, Ben Hopp, who was in LA and I was in Vegas. And I would record them on that. But I, it was, it's, that was harder. That was harder. It's, so. it's, as an actor, uh, in a voiceover studio, you have to create your own world. Uh, you know, when you're on a stage, they help you with set and pieces and costumes and stuff like that. But in a studio, you have to, it, it, your imagination really has to be vivid. You have to be very powerful with placing yourself in a world uh, that is not there. It's just simply not there. And so it's, that's, that's how you approach, you know. And I, we always thought, as an actor, you're not, you know, you're reacting you're, to what you're given, and how can you do that if, you, if that person's not there? So Imagination. That's, that's, that's ultimately, it. and Robbie's, you know, Robbie's a director, writer, uh, incredible, so he was great for them to bounce off of each other. And I think once they saw how well that worked, was when they agreed to let Richard and all of those other yeah. people come in and sort of do that. Does it have to do with Gaston? Did I say that? Mm -hmm. The gun? No. <laughs> Tying Maurice to the tree? No. Oh, I hated that part. Oh, I'm so angry. It's an amazing film. It's an amazing film. It's a, film. It's a film. It's film. different it's film. It's a different film. And it was adorable. Yeah, it's it really is. It's a different film. Yeah. She's saying um, yeah. her daughter had trouble learning to read and Bell helped her learn. And I, those are the stories I really want to hear. It, it's awesome. Yeah. Okay, one more question right there. Question, but wasn't it supposed to be like more geared towards adults? Was it more for action? second for the live action? More for yeah. adults? Yes, it's a PG movie. Uh, it, yeah. You're right. I, I would have rather been yeah, more. I, I know a lot of kids, you know, love to go to it. But it's like, the play, 
Yeah. And yeah. 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 Why the heck? Yeah. Don did not want the guns at the end of the movie. He lost that battle to the director. I hated that that he shot him like that. That made me upset. But yeah, I mean, the it, talent was amazing. Dan Stevens, amazing. Both yeah. Robbie and I thought Dan was brilliant. So. <laughs>